All right, think of a poison. Ah, I read your mind, arsenic, right? Well, arsenic actually is a metal. And when we talk about arsenic being a poison, we're talking about compounds of arsenic, like arsenic trioxide or arsenic sulfide. Those are the classic ones. Arsenic sulfide is available as a realgar or orpiment. These are naturally occurring minerals known to the ancients. So poisoning with arsenic goes back a long time. But most people, of course, are familiar with the 1944 movie, Arsenic and Old Lace, or they've read Agatha Christie, <clears throat> who used arsenic as a poison, or perhaps <clears throat> heard stories about Napoleon, who was uh, poisoned, so the story goes, by the British. <clears throat> or, if you don't like that story, uh, arsenic uh, used in the wallpaper where he was imprisoned leached out into the air and that poisoned him. Anyway, we know that arsenic is highly toxic. The Borgias, of course, used it uh, to poison people. And then there was Giuliana Tafana, an Italian lady who specialized in creating wealthy widows by poisoning their husbands. It's not surprising that royalty was worried about being poisoned, mostly by arsenic, and kings had tasters. And of course, they could dispense with the taster. If the taster perished, they knew not to partake of the food. In ancient Korea, though, <clears throat> the kings had a different idea. They knew something about chemistry. They knew something about silver and tarnishing. Silver, of course, is a bright, lustry metal. But you know that if you leave it out into the air, this is what happens. It tarnishes. That is not silver oxide. That is silver sulfide. It happens because the air has traces of hydrogen sulfide that reacts with the silver and you get the tarnish. Of course, it can be cleaned off, but this is the bane of silverware collectors. Arsenic sulfide will react with silver to tarnish the silver. And the ancient Korean kings were aware of this. So what did they do to detect arsenic in the food, if there was any? They would resort to silver chopsticks. The idea was that if there was arsenic sulfide in the food, the silver would tarnish. Not likely to have worked because you need quite a bit of arsenic to tarnish the silver. And furthermore, it doesn't happen right away. Also, there are other foods that contain sulfides like garlic. So if they were eating garlic, uh, that also would have uh, tarnished the silver. But there is something interesting, though, historically, about the use of the uh, silver chopsticks. Because in Asia, of course, chopsticks have been popular for a very long time, made of bamboo or other types of wood. But Korea is the only Asian nation where metal chopsticks are still used. And that probably goes back to the time of the ancient kings, because the people wanted to emulate what the kings were doing. But of course, they couldn't afford silver chopsticks. So they started to make chopsticks out of other metals. And that tradition has continued to this day. If you go to a Korean restaurant, uh, a proper Korean restaurant, you will be given metal chopsticks. Of course, you won't be eating any food that is tainted with arsenic. Uh, most likely, you will be dining on kimchi, which is a fermented food. And it's very interesting because it contains a lot of bacteria. And uh, as a probiotic, it is said to be good for us. So you don't have to worry about arsenic in, in the kimchi. However, the salt content, that's quite stunning. Of course, when you eat it occasionally, as we do in North America, it's not a worry. But in Korea, where they eat it often three times a day, uh, there's a frightening increase in hypertension and also of gastric cancer that has been linked with the high salt content. And of course, the metal chopsticks are not going to detect the salt. Your taste buds will. <laughs>